Greetings once again from the corner on the deck. Beautiful day in Arkansas today. I spent the last couple of days in the garden. And I hit a flea market a couple of days ago and picked up a couple of just pristine condition albums. Uh, the kids nowadays call it vinyl, but they're, they're albums. And uh, Linda Ronstadt's Greatest Hits, Volume 2. And Andy Gibbs' Greatest Hits, which is a just a fantastic uh, uh, albums. I picked them up for, I think it was $2.99 a piece. And there's not a, not even a micro scratch on them. They're really nice. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Some of you might be into the old albums. A couple of years ago I did a I was just starting out doing YouTube videos and I didn't have this camera I wasn't very good at it. Uh, I I did a YouTube video on the box that I have above my workbench uh, to show folks how I monitor how I built the box why I built the box uh, and, and use it to monitor the current draw of my radios after I repair them to make sure I don't exceed too much current, you know, right off the bat. I mean, there's nothing worse than repairing a radio and then turning it on and getting getting it up to steam. And then if you don't have any way of monitoring your current, all of a sudden you start seeing smoke or you smell something burning. Bad, bad, bad. We don't want that to happen. Since that video, I've had several people contact me through, through uh, YouTube uh, from time to time. And they would ask me about it. Well, what, how did you do this? What's this? What's that? Now, what I've decided to do is just do a complete new YouTube video showing the entire thing. Isolation transformer, uh, variac, power box, and then over to the voltmeter, and of course the amp meter, which is connected in. I've since changed amp meters. I'll tell you about that. So, once I get this video done and I get it uploaded, the original video will be pulled down. It just wasn't that good to begin with, and this is a good reason to get rid of it. There's been a lot of people looked at it, but still, this one will be better. So let's go into the bench and, and take a look-see at, at what I'm talking about. The bench is a little bit cluttered. I'm slowly cleaning it up, but we'll, we'll work around that. When I first set up this box right here, I did not have an ammeter. And uh, I didn't even have a, a voltmeter. All I had was my multimeter. And what I would do is rely on this gauge right here on my Variac, which is a bad thing to do. These gauges are not that accurate. Fortunately, I got some lacquer thinner on it one day, and it kind of messed up the glass. So now I can't even look at it, which is good. So I used my uh, multimeter to determine my current draw. The problem was it, it, you know, it tied up my multimeter. I couldn't take voltage readings in the chassis. Uh, while the radio was powered on because I was always watching the current on my multimeter and I didn't have a second one so something had to be done so what I did was I bought this uh, 5 amp AC amp meter and you can see one two three four five the problem was I couldn't read down real small I didn't like that so I bought this model 302 Hampton meter it's a lab meter very tough and it has scales from uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1, 5, and 10 amps. All I got to do is flip my little button. Works great. Built rugged. Anyway, let's see how this thing is, is wired up. So I can use either an ammeter uh, like this, an ammeter like that, or an ammeter uh, on my multimeter. It doesn't matter. It's all the same connection. These two connectors right here. This plug right here. Uh, is a wire as you can see and it goes up inside the box this wire plugs into the variac the variac this wire right here going out of the variac goes over and is plugs into the isolation transformer which is right that's the plug right there and the isolation transformer plugs into the wall so from the wall to the isolation transformer to the variac to the box this is the cord it goes up into the box and I connected it to a terminal strip. I split the wire. Once I got it up in there, I split it. I split it here, and I hooked one side here, and the other side here. Okay. The terminal strip was essential because I needed something to solder these wires to. I couldn't just, I, I could have used wire nuts and all that crap. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I wanted to use a terminal strip. So it's soldered top and bottom on the terminal strip. The rest of the terminal uh, connect, uh, connections have been cut off, okay? 
top and bottom on the power cord. Now from the top and bottom is a white wire and up here you see a red wire. Now the red and white wire go out and follow along and go into this box over here and are connected to the back of the voltmeter. On each one connects to each connection on the voltmeter. Let me see if I can get you up there where you can see it. Okay, one here and one here. That's all. That's all that's in that box. Now, a second wire was added inside the box. That's this one right here. Okay, the one with the knot in it. And it too is split. And it too is soldered to the top and bottom terminal. So actually I've got three wires on the bottom, three wires on the top. The power wire, the red wire, and the, uh, the uh, second wire with the knot in it is soldered to the top. The other side of the power wire, the white wire, and the other side of the wire with the knot is soldered here. So I got three here and three here. Okay, now that, that wire with the knot was split again, just like I did the power cord up here. And one, one side goes into, let me get some light in here where you can see. One side of the split goes into one to the to uh, one side of the electrical plug. The other side of the split goes down to this uh, connection right here, this uh, jack. Now I could have connected it to the red or black; it doesn't matter. And then whatever one I did not connect to, that wire would go from there over to the to the. Uh, the outlet okay second wire is split connected to the same place as the power cord but the opposite ends one goes to the to the multimeter jack the other one goes to the outlet and then now all I have to do is connect in my uh, multimeter this way with these two wires I can connect or, or my amp meter with these two wires rather I can connect my multimeter into it with the two with the two uh, probes or I can go ahead and reconnect this back in there and get rid of everything and then just plug these back into there same thing Let me get some light back over here what I wind up with is an ammeter I wind up with an ammeter uh, in series and a voltmeter and a uh, wall outlet in parallel across the line across the line the way this thing works is if you have a if you have a plug like that for an ammeter to work it has to be in series with the line okay like that it has to be in series but a multimeter I mean a voltmeter rather I'm real tired today I've been out in the garden for two days straight but a voltmeter is across the line in parallel so this is a this is V. Incidentally, in Rick McWhorter's book, The All-American 5 Radio, which is uh, Understanding and Restoring Transformerless Radios of the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, uh, Rick is All-American 5 Radio. Most of you know him on YouTube by that handle. Page 77. Right there, page 77. Shows all of this hookup that I just showed you. There's the chassis. And, uh how it plugs into the socket, how the voltage is all controlled by the variac. His is a wall-mounted variac, a little bit different than mine, except that it's horizontal and mine's vertical. And uh, I advise you to go ahead and pick up a copy of his book. You can even find him on eBay. If you all don't understand any of this, or I just really confused you even more, let me know what your response is. This is John.